our second scripture lesson, it comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, but I actually wanted to start a little, uh, a little before that, uh, because it sets up what, uh, what the, the verses 1 through 4. So starting at verse 45 of chapter 20, in the hearing of all the people, Jesus said to the disciples, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes <laughs> and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seat in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in all that she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the moral of the story is that when you pass the plate this morning, give everything you have. Amen. <laughs> that was easy. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Woo Only kidding. <laughs> I chose this passage because I was thinking about how we don't know. We don't know that we, you know, we look at other people and we make judgments and, you know, we think, you know, this one's so generous or this one's so cheap or this one, da, 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 da. And we don't know. Don't, don't even go there, you know. End of story. But as I researched this passage, I discovered that Jesus isn't lifting up the women's, the women's generosity. He's really critiquing the religious legal experts, the scribes, who Jesus says walk around in long robes, love to be greeted with respect in the synagogue and the marketplaces, have the best seats in the, in the synagogues. That's funny because Margaret and I were just complaining how uncomfortable these seats are, just, <laughs> just, just so you know. And places at, in, of honor at banquets. And then he says this, they devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. And then he tells the story. Then notice this widow, widow, they devour widows' houses. Widows, it was thought, could not manage their own money because they're women. Hmm. Thanks. So they would hire scribes to manage their finances for them. That was the practice. And guess what? Embezzlement and abuse followed. They devoured widows' houses. And who told this woman, woman that she needed to give everything that she had, even what she had to live on in order to honor God. A corrupt system. Jesus has taken on the temple. The next passage is about the destruction of Jerusalem. Jesus is not calling us to put everything that we have to live on in the offering plate. He's calling out institutions that mismanage people's funds and take advantage of the weak. This is a great stewardship sermon, isn't it? <laughs> I recently had a conversation with a new friend who was saying that she wants to be generous with the church, but she's unhappy with how they manage the funds. And I thought about that since. I remember my home church years ago that I grew up in. Uh, decided to withhold funds from the hold, withhold their funds from the larger denominations because of a stance that the, den that the denomination took. Now I disagreed with my with my the elders of my church on it, but I said that's a dangerous precedent. And I I do think sometimes it's necessary, absolutely. But I'm like, what if people do that to you? And, you know, from the pews because they don't like the curriculum or they don't like. Uh, they don't like the color of the carpet, you know, or, and, and the folks who, you know, who, you know, uh, do that, where it's more of a threat than a conversation. But I've been sitting with that, um, with that question. And I'm coming back to give to the things that give you joy. And, and on, you know, on behalf of churches every, everywhere, I would say, 
you know, lift up your concerns. I would be more generous if. I would feel better about my giving if. Not making it a threat, like, you know, I'm going to take my toys and go home. But, you know, I, I'm concerned because I love God and I love this church. And, and if it's said in honesty and love, you know, for the mutual, you know, building up, then it's worth being said. But what's challenging is that, you know, we all have different reasons for giving. You know, what's important to one will not be important to another. What gives me joy may not give you joy. I personally wish that every church had a huge endowment so that not one dime of the money that I give to the church had to do, had to be paid for building expenses. And so many of our churches are getting older and, that, and that's requiring more money, you know, and I really wish that, you know, all of our churches had had the foresight to set up a huge endowment so that not one, not all my money could go to mission and ministry. But I know that for some folks, that's, they want their money to go to brick and mortar, that that's what jazzes them, that they like you know, the idea of their money being used to preserve the place that has been so dear to them. That's why, that's why they're motivated to give. And I, and it's, I, years ago, I, I uh, had a pastor, and every year he has another, he does a pulpit swap for stewardship sermon because he never wants to feel like he's raising his own salary. And I, and by the way, I don't, I don't really struggle with that. But, uh, but knowing all of this, knowing that the money that you give to the church, there are some very sexy line items, like keeping the lights on. Uh, but there's also buying curriculum for kids so that they can learn about Jesus. There's also snow plowing and buying bread and juice so that we can celebrate communion together. You, know, you get it. Uh, this morning, you're going to be asked to prayerfully consider what your giving will be for Grace Presbyterian Church in the coming year, for 2022. And you will be given, uh, later in the service, an estimate of giving card, not a pledge card, but an estimate of giving. A pledge, uh, moving away from the pledge language, because some people, because they made that pledge, even you know, to their own detriment, they will fulfill that pledge. I've seen it happen where somebody loses their job, they have no money, but darn it, I made that pledge to the church. So I just, you know, on behalf of the church, I want to say, hey, if you have some catastrophe, it, we're good. We're good. It's an estimate of giving. Um, but also, hey, if you get a raise, you're coming into a lot of money. <laughs> Here we are, right? So that's why you say it's an estimate uh, based on based on on your own finances. Right? Life happens. Uh, to summarize previous sermons, we've been talking about living simply, living below our means, so that we can know more freedom and less stress and have more money, uh, no more joy, because then we're able to be more generous, and being generous gives us joy. Uh, we've talked about the lies that our culture tells us that we need more and more stuff to be happy uh, and it can actually enslave us or, and the issue that so many folks have of instant gratification and uh, credit cards, talking about credit cards and that that can get people into trouble. And we gave them fun names, affluenza and credititis, right? <laughs> we suffer from those. Uh, but we also talked about how uh, how we use our money, our financial decisions are actually spiritual decisions. If you want to know what your priorities are, look at your finances at, at the end of the month. They will tell you a story about what you value. Okay. So today I want to undermine the fact that we all have a spiritual need to give, a spiritual need. Um, and I'm not saying it all has to, to go to Grace Presbyterian, but we all have a need to be connected to something bigger than ourselves to be part of, to know that we are using the blessings that God has given us to be a force for good in the world. That this is one of the ways that we get to love God and love neighbor and love self is through our giving and our generosity. For me, I actually think this is one of the easiest ways uh, to reassure myself that my priorities are straight. You know, I, my deepest desire is to be faithful to God and you know, do I always live out of that deepest desire? For me, actually, one of the easiest ways is to write that check. And, and like, all the other ways, Lord, that I know, this is one way that I, that I, that can, I'm, can be faithful. 
but I know it's not hard. I know, well, it's not hard. I know it's, um, I have always tithed since I was a, since it, I, I tithe my babysitting money, folks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when, yeah, I, <laughs> I believed the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> So funny, uh, and and then I um, my well, I don't want to tell any stories of anything that I, that I love, but you know, you know, what do you mean? But that, but the pastor, you know, and then huh? But so if you've done it for an early age, it's not that hard. Uh, but I've also been in that place where uh, income has been lost, and and I said this a couple of weeks ago. That's when you go estimate a given. Uh, make sure you have a roof over your head and food in your stomachs and clothes on your back. And then once you figure that all out, right? So I get it. Um, last week we spoke about giving to things, people, ministries that give you joy. And I hope that giving to Grace Presbyterian Church gives you joy. Um, and I would love to list all the wonderful things that, that you're doing that I've observed since I've been here that you can be proud of. But during this COVID, I haven't gotten to see all of these things in action, but I know that throughout COVID, MESH, and for the newcomers, people talk about MESH, MESH is a ministry of food to the homeless that happens here every Saturday and happens throughout COVID. Uh, been ongoing, feeding people, showing them a movie if the DVD player works, uh, and, and learning folks' names through the ministry of this church. You, support, you supported local food pantries on a monthly basis. And I hope you all saw the, the wonderful photo of, of Bob Rowe with the little shopping cart, d- dropping off all the soup cans at Montclair Inn. To, you know, and they immediately posted a thank you on their social media. media. We shared it. But you know, we get to be part of that. Praise God. It makes you feel wonderful and proud to be part of the church. Uh, did you know that Jody Walsh is the Mrs. Rogers of Glen Ridge? <laughs> And that we have had up to 12 kids running around that beautifully manicured, manicured lawn outside on Sunday mornings while we've been sitting here. That's a, that's, that's a blessing. Praise God. And um, another blessing that happened this week, the Garden Club donated 100 tulip bulbs uh, to the church. I think I, I'm like, what a great town. They're, 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 they're handing out tulip bulbs for people. To, to plant on their property to make you know to make it your your town pretty um, and the beauty of flowers and and I and I've said this before I have played with gardening by COVID plenty of time I'm all in and when gardeners are very gracious generous people and if, if they find each other and this I didn't realize now. Um, I, I look at my garden and there's a little rose bush and my mother-in-law and my husband bought that. And that makes me think of them. And this other little rose bush, my mother and I were walking through Walmart and it was $8.99. <laughs> and it has done beautifully. And when I look at it, it makes me think of my mother. And this one, my sister-in-law. And the executive presbyter of Highlands Presbyter, where I have been for the last 20 years, is a gardener. And she calls me up, Robin, you want some daisies? Robin, you want some yarrow? Robin, you want some comfort? Yes, 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 yes. So I'm seeing Jean all over my, all over my garden. So I was told by Allison this week that uh, Sharon Carlson, yes. yeah. who used to volunteer with Mesh, used to be the, the, the tulip bulb planter here at the church. If you would like to honor Sharon with me and help me plant those bulbs outside, let's, let's do that in honor of her so that when we, we look at those tulips, we think of her. See me after the service. I think that would be a lovely tribute to her. Um, other things that are going on. December 19th, we're going to have a children's advent Sunday. Animalitos, little animals are going to come. Uh, they're going to be outside. And so things are starting back up. Uh, Season with Grace is planning a, a Christmas shindig. Uh, women are reading about an Ignatian spirituality uh, with Margot and ladies. Don't stress, there will be a book group uh, once Margot goes to Arizona, uh, so don't sweat it. But all these things are going on and things are happening. And I want to plant a seed for the men. Uh, I have been in churches where there's a thriving men's ministry. If the spirit is whispering in your ear, 
you know, we, we, should, we should really have like a men's fellowship breakfast or uh, meet at a diner and, and do a, a book study or just gather. Um, may, may my voice sound like the spirit shouting? <laughs> two of you, just need two of you to, to make that a thing. And unfortunately, I can't do it because I will change the dynamic. So, but I, I male friendships and a place where you can be real and you can pray for one another and you can do that, that spiritual friendship thing, I think is, is really key. So I hope the spirit is just mm, on, on a couple guys right now. Uh, and just little things to celebrate going on in the church. We had a professional come and, and run internet through the building and it's all reliable and it all works and praise God. You might not appreciate this, but the, we hear, yes, praise the Lord. Deeply devoted Christian, the, the guy who installed it. And I just said to him, I said, you know, I can just tell that you live in gratitude. And he goes, oh, how can I not? How can I not? And I just, you know, just little blessings and things like that. Uh, and I, this, we put this out to a friend of Warner's. And we got this, her, you know, four valves. I've been given the tour. There's four valves to that boiler. One wasn't working. The Christian education wing, there was no heat. We got an estimate for like $5,500. And Warner has a friend. And the friend said, I'll let me come look at it. Two and a half hours later, it works. <laughs> Right, and he feels good because he got to help the church. We're like, oh, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> right? And it's just like those little things that make you just praise God, the blessings. And that's what we're about. How can we be a blessing? How can we be a blessing to this community? How can we be a blessing with our money? You know, churches die that focus on themselves. You know, like uh, what's in it for me? And that those are, we call those, membership churches like what do i get for my membership that's like country club you know i pay and i get this right discipleship churches are about how can i serve this community how can i you know what are we called to do love god love neighbor and love self how do i get to love god neighbor and self through this church that's what we're called to do that's why we exist Uh, my first church as a solo pastor i was an associate pastor for three years and then i became the, uh, the solo pastor for, of a small church in, in Wharton. And small churches are always worried about their survival. And I said, don't, don't worry about it. As long as we are being the church, there will always be a church. If we forget what it means to be a church, then there's no reason for us to be. And God has no investment in our being. So let's just worry about whether we are making Jesus known in word and deed, whether we are making the love of God known in word and deed. The church is still around, that little church. It's got its issues. You've got your issues. Every church has their issues. Why? Because we're filled with people, right? It's unavoidable. But through this human-filled church, lives have been changed. Children have been baptized, young people confirmed, marriages, funerals, Bach cantatas, gospel choirs. Got to watch a video uh, yesterday of a gospel choir. Oh my gosh. Hope has been given and or restored in these pews and through this church. Bridges have been built. Lifelong friendships have been forged. Joy has been overflowing. Not since I've been here. <laughs> and I got to tell you, the, my first week here, I came in and I was like, oh, there's despair. Mm. There is despair in the room when I got here. But not anymore. Thank you, God. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been hard. Like, oh, Lord, have mercy. No, that's lifted. But we're not, we're not at the point where anybody's doing the shake. But we're on our way. Uh, together, we get to figure out how to live our lives in love and give hope, to break chains, to sing and dance, to love on little kids, to hold the hands of those who need a hand to hold, to make it up the stairs, or just to know that somebody's with them, to remind one another that we are not in this all alone. I heard the story of a rousing sermon 
that was actually given in Africa, and it was about giving your all to Christ. And the plate was passed, and this woman had nothing to put in the plate, not two dimes. So she, she took the plate from, from the usher and put it on the floor and then stood in it <laughs> and said, all of me. I give all of me. In response to God's love, we are called to love God with our whole selves, with all that we have. This morning, you were asked to prayerfully consider what level of support the Spirit is calling you to give financially to Grace Presbyterian Church for 2022. There's lots of good that you can do with your money. Um, You will be given an estimate of giving card again uh, during and then be asked to prayerfully uh, to pray on it before you hand it in. If you are visiting with us and you are given one of those cards, you are being given a bookmark. Do not feel <laughs> that you have to feel, fill that out. No pressure to give. Never any pressure to give. Uh, if you need time to pray over this, take it. If you have questions or concerns, please ask them in the coming days, in the weeks and weeks. But And, and this is my job to just ask you to make it a prayerful decision, one that's made in conversation with God, to pray about it, to fill it out, and then look at, look at that card and, and just say, do you have a sense of peace about it? Does it give you joy? And then to God be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.